Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at some of the new features brought to us in Command Modern Operations version 108 beta. Now I will say right away that this is definitely a beta version. You know, there's some little bugs kind of here and there. So for those of you who are doing an ongoing playthrough or something like that, I recommend staying on the regular public build. I'll wait until some of the kinks are kind of ironed out, especially like saving and things like that. So our little scenario today is relatively straightforward. Uh, what we have here is we have a couple drones. And uh, one of the big things that they've added is not only have they made it so that drones have different levels of autonomy, but they've also added communications jamming. Now, communications jamming has been one of those things that we've actually had for a really long time in the professional edition. And I can safely say that communications jamming creates some really interesting scenarios, and there's a lot to it. And I will definitely do a more detailed video on communications jamming once the beta kind of evolves just a little bit more, because I don't want to go too crazy on that stuff, especially if things are going to change later. So what we have here is a pretty straightforward scenario. Well, we have a ship we're trying to find. I'm pretty sure it's right there. There it is. And of course, what we have is a couple drones. Uh, one of our drones here is an MQ-1C, and the other one, of course, is an MQ-9A. Now, this sucker right here is an interesting aircraft, because when I open up its little display, you're going to see here that its autonomy level is self-recovering, which means if it can't talk to the home base, it's going to attempt to return to home base. It's going to create a really big problem, you'll see. This one over here, on the other hand, is the MQ-9 Reaper. This is a little bit bigger, a little more modern, and you're going to see this fault ad event adaptive. That means not only can it work in areas where it cannot talk to home base, but it's smart enough to kind of fulfill the mission. There's actually a lot of different modes of this autonomy level. And there's a really, really good article that's kind of kicking around if you're absolutely interested in kind of taking a look at this. Uh, you can find it basically right here. And the cool thing with, of course, all of these things that you see here is that they're going to have interesting little gameplay elements. And uh, for those of you who play different scenarios, you're going to get a kick out of this. So what I'm going to do is I have my two little Reapers here. And of course, if I recall correctly, uh, yes, we have ourselves a little ship, which we have to acquire. Let me borrow my Tupolif real quick here. Hey, flip your radar on, will you, buddy? We're trying to find the ship. Hey, we got it. Fantastic. All right, so we have our ship. And of course, I'm going to take my drones. I'm going to go ahead and press F1. Go ahead and click on this one. Uh-oh. <laughs> Bugs. And it looks like we recovered from that pretty easily. All right, we're going to go ahead and select that other one, too. That's called a fail safe. I did say this was a beta. I did say this was a beta. So we've ordered these two guys to go ahead and check out this little target here. And now they're going to start speeding up a little bit. And they're going to be engaged offensive in just a moment and start making their way towards our little target here. Meanwhile, Tupolif 142 is going to keep an eye on things. Meanwhile, let's go swing to the other side real quick. Now, I'm going to pause my game for a second and bring up the scenario features and settings. One of the things you're going to notice is there are a lot of new ones now, including these drone autonomy levels, including ASCM terrain following restrictions. I'm going to leave that here because this is going to be funny in a minute. And the other thing you'll notice, too, is you have just communications jamming now as an option. If you don't hit that, you don't get the fun part that's going to happen in a second. So I'm going to go over to my lovely, lovely ship here. I'm going to go to my sensors real quick. And I'm going to turn on my communications jammer. Now, the communications jammer on this thing is a very modern one. It is very, 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 very sophisticated. Now, one thing I want to say immediately is as soon as the communications jammer flips on, you'll probably observe the fact that the little word jammed is going to appear next to each one of these. I'm kind of visualizing space balls with jammed. <laughs> Uh-oh. And you can see my two drones have dropped off the network because there's no way to communicate with them. Now, you're sitting here going, what if you have satellite communications? I thought these guys had satellite communications. You can't jam them line to sight. And the answer is, that's correct. What I had actually done is I'd gone into here, and I'd actually removed the satellite communications from these two units. Uh, the reason I did that, of course, is that completely denies them the ability to talk back to us. So right now, we are completely hopeless. We are on our own. These drones are just doing whatever the heck they're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin my OSA around real quickly here. I'm actually going to get a more powerful radar on the OSA. And the reason I want to do this is just so we can keep an eye on the goofiness that's going on in the sky above us here. Uh, let's see. We need, we need TPY. We'll probably do it too. Uh, TP3, TP1. One, or maybe SPY1. That's what I wanted. There we go. We'll do a 1D here. And the reason I'm picking this radar is I just want to be able to see my own aircraft I can no longer identify. Now, one of the things you'll probably notice now that the comms jammer is kicked on is my little tupelive up here. I actually know where this thing is pretty accurately. And now the reason I do is because I'm detecting them with my own radar. If I didn't have that ability, it would work. Another thing you'll probably notice is there's no line of sight between the enemy vessel and where my handy dandy OSA is. You also notice we don't know where the enemy vessel is anymore because our Tupolev basically doesn't have the ability to communicate back to him. Start to see how it gets a little complicated. So the other thing I'm going to do too, uh, while we're kind of going along here, is I'll go ahead and get my guy moving a little bit quicker here. Come on, get moving. We've got work to do. These things are really fast, by the way. Is to see what happens next. 
So I'm gonna speed up time a little bit here. And obviously I can only see so far in the sky. We have a pretty good sight on where our friend uh, the Tupa live is just because it shows up on radar real easily. But our two drones are completely, completely off the network. We have no idea where these drones are. They're not talking to me. They're not telling me what's going on. Nothing's going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come over here. I'm gonna add myself another radar. And now the reason I'm doing this is just to show you how frustrating this uh, communications jamming will make your life here. Uh, let's see, this would be uh, let's see, air traffic control radar. That sounds pretty good to me. And the reason I'm adding this is just to give us an idea of anybody comes into view here. All right, so let's go ahead and speed up time here. We'll go ahead and add a minute here and see what happens. I'll actually, we'll pause first, speed it up to uh, one flame. And then we, oop, I must have pressed F1 while I was doing things here. One minute, okay? So we passed by one minute. So we still have a pretty good idea where all those guys are. We have no idea where, oh, we have a little bit of knowledge about this drone. Oh, we know they're still on the way. We still have no idea what that other one is. We can see it continues to proceed on its mission. Notice it's disregarding the fact that it has no idea where the enemy is. It's just trying to complete its mission. This one on the flip side, is returning to base. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take a look here. I'll go ahead and speed up time again, another minute and a chunk. And we can tell this guy's basically making his way over there, trying to do what he can. He's gonna try to identify and find that target on its own. Again, he's smart enough to do that. But what you'll observe is he flew right over the target because he had no knowledge of where the target is. So now he's gonna come spinning around. I'll go slow down time a little bit here. And again, this is all real time, or not real time. It's a slightly exaggerated time. I think they've changed space bar. Let's see here. It's coming around just like that. All right. I have lost the ability to proceed in time. That's an interesting new problem to have. Ah, I fixed that. Good. All right, there it is. We have an unknown identified something's unknown. This is not unknown. This is actually a missile that was launched at this particular target right here. So he's going to come flying down here. Go ahead and press Control V. And you can see our little drone. It's not a missile. It's our drone trying to find that target on the ground, which it has no knowledge of any longer. And you can see just how challenging this is as far as making these things a little bit more complicated for any type of scenario that you're actually running at any given time. There we go. Now everything's moving smoothly. There we go. I can speed time up. So that poor drone, remember, I'm on uh, show everything mode. So if I press control V, we don't even know that this is one of our drones as a result of all these consequences uh, that's kind of stacking up together here. Oof, that's getting messy. So now let's go ahead and uh, go back to the other team for a second here. And you can already see, by the way, remember that drone earlier I was talking about? He turned around, he flew all the way home. He's actually going to come home, land, and go, what? And then be confused as to why he didn't return back to the mission. Isn't that crazy how that works? So let's go switch to the other team again for a second here. Now I'll demonstrate some shenanigans. I'm going to go to sensors real quick, and I'm going to shut the communication jammer off. Now there's a big reason why I chose to do that. Let's go swing back to the other team here. Go ahead now fast forward a little bit of time here. I don't need you to be on auto pause mode. You can just do it on your own. And we'll keep skipping around with auto pause mode. Those of you getting ready for real time kind of stuff, uh, you're gonna have to get used to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and RTB that particular unit and uh, he's just gonna kind of head boom. Oh, he took a shot, he took a shot. Oh, uh, you can go home. Uh, like I said, you can return to base. Uh, I'm actually gonna unassign you real quickly and hit you back home. Now, you know, my OSA right here is uh, getting awfully close to being in range here. You know what I should do? I should use one of those missiles on the side of this thing against that boat. I mean, we've done a lot of damage to it. Let's finish the job, right? So I'm going to press Shift F1. I'm going to click on the boat. And what you will notice here is we cannot fire our missile. This is another new feature that they've added to this one. And it's the fact that the older cruise missiles only flew at one altitude. And unfortunately, there's mountains between us and the target that will cause it to slam into it. Now, quite hilariously, if I press Control F1 for a manual shot, and I say, no, 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 just, just, just fire, it'll be fine, kind of a thing like that. And of course, I add order the thing to fire. You can see the missile kind of comes flying out there, comes flying out there. Oh, we got lucky that time. Oh, actually, it's just kind of overshot and basically cruised over. Our mountains weren't tall enough. Normally, what would happen, of course, is we'd smack into one of these targets and not be able to affect the target on the other side at all. So let's go ahead and flip them over to the other side here, grab ourselves another lock, and uh, you'll notice we actually can safely take our shot here. So we'll go ahead and uh, take our shot. There goes the round. Uh, what, <laughs> what was that? Did that thing just go swimming? Yes, it just went swimming. Oh, man, these old missiles are hard to use. Let's try this one. There it goes. Oh, and that one also went swimming. Sigh. And it just gives you an idea of some of the complications uh, that's going. Let's see. 48 from feet from intended point. No units affected by explosion. Oh, well, it turns out we ran out of weapons. But one of the things you probably also know, is since we're no longer jamming, remember a while ago this guy was returning back to base? he's no longer being jammed, which now means he's allowed to continue his mission. As a matter of fact, you will see here that he continues his mission exactly as it was previously. This creates an interesting little problem, by the way. Go ahead and skip it away. There we go. There comes the missiles. Bang, bang. And the mission is accomplished. I can order that one to return home. 
There are a lot of other features in this new version of command modded operations, and I'm still kind of playing with them and getting the hang of it. Some of the stuff we have seen over in the PE version before, but the key thing is once you start fiddling with that comms jamming, once you start fiddling with those little drones, things are going to change quite a bit for Modern Warfare. Enjoy.